Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a winter cabin with moonlight and pine trees. Uh, we're going to try to keep it uh, beginner friendly, so I'll be showing you step by step how to do it from start to finish. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's been on chat for the live show, so if you've got questions, you can ask those while I'm painting. Let's get started. All right, so this is my reference photo. I really liked it. It just was very simple, but um, I don't know. I like the monochromatic uh, all blue palette. Uh, we are going to have just a little bit of color in here with the moonlight and the um, cabin glowing there, but most of it is just a palette of blue. I'm going to be using an 8 by 10 inch canvas. Uh, this is the Pro Series Belgian Linen uh, Canvas Board from Fredericks. They're our canvas sponsor, so thank you to them for providing our canvas today. And our brush sponsor is Princeton. They're providing our brushes. This is uh, the 12 Bright, the number 6 Angle Bright, and a number 2 Round in the 6100 Series. And then I've got some smaller brushes. These are the um, 3 8 inch and quarter inch angle brushes that I use almost every video. <laughs> and... Got a couple of the Willows blenders. This is a quarter inch and three-eighths inch Willows blenders. Those are the Velvet Touch line and the red handles. And then I've got a small spotter. This is a three-aught round and a uh, ten-aught fan brush, bristle fan, in the select line with the blue handles. Thank you to Princeton for providing our brushes. All right, let's uh, go over colors really quick. Got titanium white, quinacridone magenta, cadmium yellow medium, uh, this is Thalo Blue and Thalo Blue Light, Ultramarine Blue, Ultramarine Blue Light, uh, Burnt Umber, and Carbon Black. If you don't have all of these colors, you can just mix what you have. Um, I'm starting out with the Thalo Blue Light and the, the Ultramarine Blue Light uh, as pre-mixed colors just because we're going to be using so much of these lighter blue colors. It'll just speed up the process, but you can just pre-mix a little bit of white into your uh, Thalo Blue and Ultramarine Blue to get those colors. And um, our yellow and quinacridone, we're just going to have a touch of that quinacridone because the yellow is just slightly kind of golden colored um, and there's a little bit of pink in the moon. So, but uh, you don't have to have those exact colors. You can just use what you've got. All right, I'm going to wet down my brush. I've got the number 12 bright here and I'm going to start on the background and uh, let me draw out my basic shapes first. So um, our main tree is going to be all, right on the third. So if you kind of uh, divide your canvas into thirds, you could, you've got this main tree right here on this third and it comes down to about just below the third this way. So if you kind of mark your third this way, the cabin kind of hits right on the third on this, in this direction and here. So the top of the cabin is right about uh, at the apex of the third marker. So if you just kind of do a vertical line here and a vertical or a horizontal lines here to kind of figure out your thirds, your cabin is gonna be sitting right below that uh, third there. It's going to be tucked in right here. And then this is going to slope up from just below there. So there's our halfway mark. That's just below the quarter mark on our canvas. We're going to angle it up and here's our halfway mark. So we're going down just below the halfway mark. Uh, and mm, let's see if this is on the third. Let's see. Yeah, it's right about on the third here. So you're, you're going to be angling it from the third to the quarter mark on this side, if that makes sense. So we're going to do an angle there. That's kind of our sloped heel side on the bottom part of our canvas. And then there's going to be another little slope at the bottom of this tree that cuts off part of that. And then you're going to see this path coming in through here, but we're not going to we're going to be painting all this in first so we don't have to put all of that in. Really, we're going to just do our three main um, sections here. The slope here, the mountain here, and then the sky. So our mountain here is going to start right on the quarter mark here, the top here. It's going to angle down fairly sharply, come up just a little bit, and come back down. And it's just above the halfway mark. So right there. 
And then there is another mountain that's kind of peeking out right here. So kind of right about uh, maybe a little bit to one side of the halfway mark. There's just a little bit of mountain back here peeking out. Um, and then our moon is sitting right in, right in here, kind of next to our tree. All right. And that's all we really need to do for now. All of these trees in here are going to be um, covering up this portion. So we're going to paint that first. All right, so wetting down our brush, I'm going to go ahead and that sky is kind of a mix between this, um, the two blues. So we're going to go, go ahead and just mix the light ultramarine and the light phthalo blue to get kind of a basic light blue color. And then I'm going to grab just a tiny bit extra phthalo blue. And a tiny bit extra of the ultramarine blue to get a little bit darker color. And I did it on the same corner, so this corner is going to be a little bit lighter than this corner up here. And I'm just kind of working those together, and I'm going to start up here, paint all the way across with that dark color towards the top of the canvas. And if you want to, you could spray your canvas just once lightly with water. That'll help kind of get the paint to flow onto it better. My canvas that I'm using is fairly low um, texture. It's pretty smooth, so I don't really need to do that. But if you were using a, a really heavily textured canvas, you might want to add a little bit of water to it just to start with. Okay, so I picked up a little bit of water there and I picked up a little bit more of my lighter blue now and I just went, pick up a little bit of water on the corner of my brush. Mark, why don't you show this side cam, please? you a little bit of water I'm not dipping the whole thing in I'm just dipping that bottom corner in then going to my palette here I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of that light those two light blues there brush it in and if you feel if I see like puddling or anything over here on my palette I can touch it once on my paper towel just to get off any extra moisture and then I'm gonna go right below where I want to blend that color in and then blend it up. Once I kind of put that color down where I want it to be, then I'm gonna blend it up into my other colors, but I'm not gonna go all the way up into the dark area there because I wanna keep that fairly, fairly dark up there. And if I went up there with the white, it would just, or the lighter color, you know, it would just take away from the dark color we got going on there. Okay, so it's a very gradual kind of um, blend right there, but that's about what we want. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the light ultramarine for this bottom part. So just slightly more of the ultramarine for this part down here. It's a little bit more purpley on this bottom section. And I'm just going to go side to side with it. Kind of following the angle of that hillside. Fill that all in, and then I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the ultramarine blue, a little bit of that phthalo blue, just like I did with the sky, on one side of the brush, so it's just on one corner, and I'm going to pull it in from the sides, just kind of into that wet paint. It should just kind of catch the color and add a little bit of color to the paint color that we've got going on right there. And I'm probably going to do this a couple of times because this is obviously the first coat. It may not cover completely your white background to start with. So we don't want to lift off so much paint that we're showing that white at the background. But I'm going to kind of pull in some of this dark color into that light color. You can see where we've done it over here and then a little bit over here following that angle of the hillside. There we go. Okay, I think that's good. All right, then now up in this section, this area is a little bit more with the phthalo blue. So I'm going to grab that phthalo blue, mix that in with these two colors. And might go a little bit darker even. 
I might add just a little bit of black just to tone it down so that it's not so bright. So I added a little bit of black to that thalo blue, still working in on these, all these other colors. So they're all going to kind of match. Going a little bit darker. There we go. I'm just going to fill this area in. Now, of course, this area back here is going to be dark pine trees, so we're going to actually have a lot darker color for the pine trees. We can mix a little bit of that up and kind of pull. that hillside up but we're gonna don't want to go too high with this because we do want that this area to be lighter behind these big dark pine trees in front so I'm gonna put that dark color right on that horizon line there but I'm not gonna not gonna go too high with it okay then I'm gonna Clean out my brush a little bit. Pick up that phthalo blue. And go back in here. And I'm just at the top here, I'm just using my brush kind of straight up and down. It's sort of fuzzy at the top edge. And that's okay, because we're gonna get, we want those, that top edge of the trees to be uneven so I'm not worried about getting a clean edge right here just going to tap this in for now trying to get just trying to get a color underneath if it's not covering very well you can pick up a little bit of water help smooth that onto your canvas Okay, so going just a little bit under where I want the tops of my tree to be. Now we've, we've got a little bit of sky area left up there. Really, it's not that big of a deal with these because these trees are so small. But if we were doing bigger trees, we would want to look for the bottom edge. So like on these trees where I did that black, I want to look for the very lowest part and stop my black right there. So I want to stop my black right at the lowest part of those trees so that I don't have to... Uh, worry about filling this part in with another color later. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Clean that out. That's still wet up there, so I'm not going to want to touch that. cabin foreground will be like one of the last things we do so we're going to work on it in stages we did the background for the um, sky and then we'll do the trees and then we'll do the bigger trees here and then we'll do the the cabin in the foreground uh, let me see I was trying to see if I can get that little section in there. I'm going to try to use my 3 8 inch angle brush here and a little bit of white and it looks like it's kind of like a little bit of the ultramarine blue and maybe a little bit of black but then with white so it's kind of a light blue gray color yeah that's about the right color in white and right in here maybe a little bit lighter and this is all going up into the into the cloud. 
thoughts. You could leave this out if you wanted to. I'm not sure that it's adding a whole lot to the composition, so sometimes I'll leave things out if I don't really think that they're adding anything to the look of the painting. And then I'm going to grab that yellow, or the, I mean, the pink that was in our, the blue, I don't know why I said pink, blue that was in our sky right there. I'm going to pull that down. Using the tip of the brush there, I'm going to use a little bit more of that blue. Maybe get a little bit of this blue from down here, add it to my ultramarine. And then make sure it's light enough, because it's not very dark. It's not a very hot dark value, but it is a little bit darker than the sky. I'm just going to tap in some like little tree shapes and things back here. Yeah, I'm not sure if I love this. I kind of almost think I liked it better without the... We'll see. So then mixing up more of that sky color that's just above it, I'm going to pull it down over the top and just kind of disappear that edge. Just disappearing into the sky. And get the bigger brush out here. And this should be dry up here now. So I'm just going to go ahead and go do this whole section over again right here just so that I have a nice smooth transition. I'm just going to be lightly kind of going over the top of that. And this is dry up here, so what I can do is just add a little bit of water to it. And it will kind of glaze over the top, but it won't cover anything all the way up. I'll clean my brush out completely, or mostly completely. And I'm going to use it wet. This area is still wet up here, and I'm just going to go back and forth over that. And just try to transition in that line of wet paint into what we've already got up there. It'll just kind of disappear that edge so that we don't have any harsh lines there. I'm seeing kind of a darker, a little bit through that darker area up there. So I'm gonna tap in a little bit of that darker color. Just do a little bit more of it up there, okay. There we go. All right, so you can see how that's kind of disappeared that edge. Looks a little bit better. Still not 100% sure I like it, but it's there. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more of that blue in. Okay. Good enough. And like I said, you can decide whether you, this is probably you know, a little bit more difficult than it needs than anything else that we'll be doing. So, uh, 
you could leave that out. All right, so now I'm going to put my pine trees in right here. So I'm going to grab the light phthalo blue. And let me mix up some more of the background color. So I've got the uh, phthalo blue, which was phthalo blue and black. So I'm going to grab some of this black down here that was already pre-mixed. You keep it wet by spraying it. It'll dry pretty quickly once you mix a color. So just kind of keep it wet if you want to save it for later. <clears throat> so I'm going to try to mix a color similar to what we've already got going on here. And then I'm going to dip the tip of the brush into the light phthalo blue. So we have the darker back here and the light at the top. And I'm just going to start. And that may be a little bit too light. Let me mix up some color. I want it just a little bit lighter. Maybe not as light as that phthalo, light phthalo blue. So let's try that again. Okay, so we've got the dark color at the back and at the brush, and we're going to get a little bit of the lighter color at the tip of the brush. So you should see kind of two tones there. And I'm just going to tap it. There we go, that's better. Tap it all along and keep these vertical if I can. Tap, 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 tap. So I was trying to think of a faster way of doing this. I was thinking maybe you could use a fan brush. It, that might work, but you wouldn't get the, the thicker um, look at the bottom of the tree. By doing it this way, we've got that natural thin thinness at the top of that tree and as you press down you're going to actually get the little bit thicker base depending on how hard you press down so I think even though this is kind of tedious it's probably the best way to get a good result on this go a little bit darker over here And do some of them up and down, like I'm, when as I'm tapping, I'm kind of going up and down and back, you know, so I'm not getting like a straight, um, too similar line here. And then I'm going to go with a little bit lighter color just over the top so I can see the difference between the trees here. So my next layer. I want to be sure that I've got oops, a little bit lighter color there. Get a little bit of that darker color on the back end. What that's doing is laying down a darker base for the lighter color to go on top of the next time you come back down. So if we just did the lighter color only um, we would end up with a lot lighter color at each time we go down we would have lighter and lighter color and so you wouldn't really get the depth we're looking for here so I'm trying to make sure that even though we're doing the tips of the trees lighter that we're still getting a little bit darker color underneath that tree up here Some of that dark color in there. And just trying to keep these all vertical so that they're not leaning to one side. Since it's on a slope, the tendency is to turn your brush and slope it <laughs> so that your trees are pointing this way. So just uh, try to resist that. Uh, tendency it's, a, it's, it's just kind of what happens because your eye sees that slope and it just kind of wants to turn your brush to follow it so just kind of make sure you're keeping it straight with the edge of your canvas here straight up and down if you can which people in Oklahoma may find that strange why that trees grow straight up and down <laughs> their trees grow sideways because of all the wind <laughs> 
and it's true. Yeah. <laughs> Not all of them, but I mean, I've seen a lot of them. Yeah, very true. <laughs> Good point, hon. Thank you. Good Fun happen. fact. Fun fact. <laughs> okay, so not quite that light. And I want, if I want to get thicker trees, which I kind of want it thicker on their bases, I'm going to kind of press down and see how it creates that kind of triangle shape. And I could switch to a smaller brush too if you don't want such long trees, but I am overlapping them very closely. <clears throat> and just starting at the top here so that each individual next layer is going to be covering over the bottom of the layer above. Starting to get there. It's good. It looks like trees, I think. And we could try it with the fan brush to see what that looks like. I was thinking you could do like, I'm really not sure that it would look the same. It's just so thin, you know, you're not getting that thicker line. And then maybe you could use one of these, which I think I did these, uh, and one of the, I did the bear mountain that worked pretty good. One of those what? Uh, the, um, Willow's Blenders. Thanks. Thanks. Sorry. That's okay. I get going. I forget. I forget my words. <laughs> it's a thing. Okay. So just. And up and back. And the harder I press on the heel of the brush, the thicker the trees will be. We'll still keep the thin tip, but we'll get a thicker. You can see it, the more I press down hard on the bottom of the brush, the fatter our trees will be. So you can keep that in mind when you're doing yours. Looking pretty good, I think. And then we can always go back in and add a little highlights or a little bit darker areas if we, you know, if you get an area that just looks all one color. You know, uh, and you don't see a whole lot of separation from the trees. You can go back in and add a darker or lighter color, whatever you need to do. So I'm going back in with the darker here just so that I'm make sure I have a layer of the dark in there. Make it a little bit lighter. So we didn't get to say hello to everybody yet. So hello. And if you're new to our channel, we hope you'll enjoy it and subscribe and come back and watch us again. We do this twice a week. And my whole goal is just to help you on your art journey and learn to paint in a kind of a fun and relaxed atmosphere and take the kind of the mystery out of learning to paint. Some of my tutorials are a little bit more difficult than others. If you're looking to start a painting for the first time, you might look for the tutorials of mine that says, say easy or beginner in the title. And that'll let you know that those are going to be the ones that are for first time painters, or at least, you know, new painters ish. And then um, the ones that don't say that are going to be maybe 
when you've been painting a couple, two, three paintings and want to try something a little bit more difficult. So what? So that's how that works? Yeah. Okay. That's how I titled them. Why? What are you laughing at? <clears throat> I'm weighing my my options here of what to say. <laughs> that's what I do. I know. My titles. I was going to be a smart aleck. Okay. You're very good at that. There's what over, well over 300. Yes. And so you're adding what, eight a month? Uh, eight, uh, nine, if you count the bonus videos that we right. do for Patreon. Yep. That's straight up on YouTube, eight, so you're mm -hmm. adding almost 100 a year. Yep. Yeah, we are. If you know, we take take a week off here and there, so it's not a, it's not like we're going to take off Christmas week. So it's not always eight a month. This month, I think we're doing six, maybe. But all right, so there we go. Not too bad, right? Definitely, I think that looks better now that we did this. So I don't mind this as much. At first, I didn't really like it, but I think it's okay now. And I'm not going any farther down because our trees are going to definitely be covering all this up. So there's no reason to waste our time doing those. All right, I like that. I like that color too. It's really pretty. Got to have almost a teal. Thalo blue has got a lot of green in it. Uh, at least the thalo blue green shade that I'm using. It's, it's definitely on the green side of the spectrum. And then the ultramarine blue that we used like down in here has a lot of purple in it. Um, it's more on the red side of the scale, so it's, it's good for when we want a more purpley blue color. So I'm going to mix some of the light ultramarine with my ultramarine blue here, and I'm going to grab some of that phthalo blue that's got the black in it, maybe a little bit more phthalo. When you mix these two together, they kind of neutralize each other since this one's so green and this one's so, um, you know, red. They kind of make this beautiful, like, royal blue. They're right in the middle um, blue, so works really well. I'm going to go in here and add deeper shadows in my hillside here. Figure out where I wanted this tree, so it's going to be right on the third, so right here, and just a little bit down, so maybe an inch down from the top of that, right there. This is where my tree is sitting, so I want to do a diagonal line there. Grab some of that white. You can see how much this, this is why I started with the light ultramarine and light phthalo blue because you can, or you can see how much white you need to, to neutralize these blues. They're so strongly pigmented. Uh, it can be hard to get a lighter version of them going. All right, so got that lighter color I'm trying to get a color close to what we did in this bottom part here and then just want to go with a little bit lighter color and then yeah I think that's good This area down here is quite purpley, so I'm going to add white to my light ultramarine. Just go back over this just a little bit right here. And then a little bit, our cabin is right in here and there's a little bit of glow 
right in front of the cabin. So I'll do a little bit of this lighter color right there, too. All right, then I'm going to grab some more white and grab some phthalo blue. I think I want, let's go ahead and use this. Let's go ahead and use the little stippler. And I'm going to go ahead and put in my little path here from the house. So it's going to right in the middle of the canvas. So find that middle part and it starts right about there. And it angles this way. It's very thin. Kind of angles there. I'm starting out with kind of a the light yellow blue here. And I'll add more white to it later, but I just want to start kind of light with it, or kind of a medium color first, and then add the lighter highlights to it. So I'm just going to tap it at diagonal down here. And when I get to this line, I'm going to stop, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to start another line right here and follow it out this way, just barely tapping. Okay, then we're going to curve it down like an S, making an S right here. Come back in. So this part's almost flat right here. And then once I get to this middle again, right here, I'm going to curve it and widen it. Curve it back this way. Widen it out. So it stays fairly thin all through there until right about here. And then it starts getting quite wide. Okay, there we go. I'm going to pick up some white. I'm going to go right in the middle of that. Tap in the white. Highlight the middle of the path. Yeah, just a little tiny bit of this in. This, this back here is so far away, we're not seeing as much brightness on it. And then we can put a little bit kind of outside the edges like it's, you know, broken up by feet or whatever. It's not a perfect smooth path. There we go. Looks good already. I like it. Alright, so let's, now this is dry, let me figure out where my, my tree is going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of chalk that in with some white. get it out. There we go. Um, so it was right on the third. So right here. Right there. And it goes almost to the top of the canvas. So it comes down just a couple inches. All the way down there. And try to keep him vertical. You can use the edge of your canvas as a guide or you can even use a ruler if you want to. to make sure he's perfectly straight. There, and then we're going to have another tree kind of right in the middle that's shorter but still going above the mountain here and going right to that little shadow area that we drew right there. And then another one that is just on this side of the path that's going to be at the back side of the cabin. So our cabin is going to be right in here. And so this tall tree is going to be right here, and it is almost on this third. So this is with the third here. This is the third here. He's just on the inside of that third right there, and he's about equal with the top of this tree here. Come straight down, and 
he's going to widen out so his bottom of him is going to go behind this cabin. Actually, let's move the cabin over a little bit. So pretty much the bottom of this tree is going to be the back end of that cabin right there. And then we'll do a diagonal line for the roof of the cabin just above the hillside there. So come this way. And then another one here. And if anything, you can widen this part out just a little bit, but it's the perspective is so, um, the vanishing point is so far out here, you're not gonna really see much difference between these two lines. So you can make them parallel, that's fine. You can make this parallel, this, make these two parallel, and then just bring it, bring out this roof, and it should not go down below this point here. So this one is gonna be lower than this back here because it's farther away. And then you're gonna see the bottom of this side of the cabin. And then the edge is squared off here. Okay, so that's about all we're seeing of that little cabin there. And it's covered up by this snow drift that's coming in here and coming out in front there. Okay, and then so we've got our tree here, our tree here, 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 and then we've got a smaller one that's right next to, let's do the one that's in between. So there's going to be one in between right here that's tall but not quite as tall as this. Then another one in between that that's almost equal distance that's shorter here that goes right down kind of to the middle of the roof here. Might move this roof back a little bit. I'm gonna move him over a little bit. Another one close to the edge here, kind of a short one. And then another one in between, tall and thin, right there. And then there's going to be a shorter one here, shorter ones here and here. Another short one here. This one's going almost to the top, well, just above the top there, short. Short, short, okay. Let's put in our moon. If you need to, you can draw a circle with a tool of some sort to make it, make sure your circle is perfect. You can even use a stencil. I'm just gonna draw a little circle right there. It's a pretty small moon. And I'm going to switch to a number quarter inch angle shader. So I noticed that you're not trying to paint all those in. Paint all what in? All the trees and and the cabin and all that. I'm using my chalk. Yeah. You're not going to go at it like you did the bills? No. <laughs> I learned my lesson. <laughs> Chicken. Yeah. I learned my lesson there. <laughs> well, I already had to move the cabin. That would have been a pain if I had it all painted in. All right, so I've added a lot of mostly white, tiny bit of cadmium yellow. Make a light yellow for our moon. Here, and I'm just going to fill it in with my brush here. Use whatever brush that you're comfortable with. Does not have to be, do not have to use the same brushes as I am using. Use whatever brushes you found work best for you. I, I am just of the opinion that using the best brush that you can afford 
will save you time and frustration and a lot of mental anguish. <laughs> you're you're going to have a better painting experience with a good brush. Because if you're using a bad brush, what happens is you're going to have hairs falling out. You're going to have it splitting on you and sticking out and causing problems that you're then going to have to fix, you know. So you're just ending up spending, wasting time fixing problems that your brush caused than just getting on with painting. So I, um, I always recommend my beginners to just start out with a few brushes. You don't have to buy all of the brushes on my list. You know, you can do a lot with these angle brushes. Um, so I would get both both sizes of angle brushes. Get yourself a you know large flat. You could even use a uh, a flat uh, foam brush for some of this background stuff that I did. I mean, foam brushes would work uh, to start with for some of that. You could do all of those trees with this this size brush. We didn't have to have the little bit bigger brush. All of this did was speed up the process and made it go a little faster. But you can definitely do most everything that we did with this brush here. And where can they get that brush? Oh, the brush guys. Yeah, the brush guys. Dot com slash Angela. Oh, well, no, it's not slash Angela Fine Art. It's you go to the brush guys dot com and then you go to teacher recommended brushes and you'll see my list. Or there's there. a link down below the video it takes you right to Angela's list. Uh, right? I don't think it takes them to my list. I think they still have to go to the list. Oh, I'm not well, sure. I think it takes sure. them to the list. Does it? Okay. Uh -oh. All right. So I've mixed up some a little bit of quinacridone magenta and a little bit more of the cadmium yellow medium so that I've made kind of a brighter sort of uh, still pretty light color, but it's just a little bit brighter um, color here. And I'm going to Put in some of my details of the moon and try to do this on top of the wet paint and if it's going to lift off I can wait and do it later. Yeah it's starting to lift so I'm going to have to wait and do that later. I feel like I might want this moon to be a little bit bigger but I'm going to I guess I'm going to call it good. I'm going to use the angle brush here. And let's fill in our cabin. So I'm going to grab the ultramarine blue. I'm going to mix a little, little bit of the burnt umber and ultramarine. Mostly burnt umber. It kind of mixed in with a little of the light ultramarine that was over here on the palette. So that's fine. And I'm going to fill in our cabin here. Actually, I probably need to do the trees first now that I'm thinking about it. I do need to do the trees first. Because those trees are going to be behind this. So I'll have to draw this in again. All right, so let's see. Let me go ahead and start with this brush. This is the three eighths inch angle brush. And I'm gonna mix up some blue that's kind of like a Prussian blue. If you have Prussian blue, you could use that. Prussian blue is just like, um, it's actually a phthalo blue um, red shade, which is very similar to ultramarine blue, plus purple, plus bone black, which is like a more brownish black. So I'm using carbon black and ultramarine blue, and it'll give me a color that's fairly similar. And if you wanted to be a little bit more purpley, you could add a little bit of the um, of the um, quinacridone magenta. All right, so I've got quite a dark color here, and I've got uh, it loaded fairly thick on my brush. I'm going to push it flat, and I'm going to try to come in here and do a very thin line. And our moon is going to be lower than our tree. So I'm going to go ahead and just tap in the center of my trees with this color. I was off camera there, hon. I didn't know we were so zoomed in. Okay. 
And then right here, this one is going right here. Just kind of widening them out just a little bit at the bases because we know those are going to widen out just to see how wide they're going to get and really most of this part back here is going to be pretty much covered by these front trees so that's good enough let's go ahead and do this one here This one goes all the way to the top, points just to the inside of the moon. And all of these are going to be behind this horizon line, so we're not going to be bringing them in front like we did. These two trees are really the only ones that are setting out in front of that bank of snow there. How are you doing, hon? I'm doing good. Just hanging out over here. Okay. I had some technical difficulties at the beginning. Did we? Well, I did. Why? What was you? For some reason, my laptop would not play the video. Oh, interesting. So I had to change over to the tablet. First world problems. Yes. So for a while there, I was freaked out like nothing was working. But nobody else was saying that it wasn't working, so. Okay, good. So it's working for everybody but you. I was internally struggling. I didn't let you know. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Is that why you don't have a shirt on? <laughs> <laughs> Is that distracting you? Were you getting stressed out over there? It's just hot in here or what? Is it, is it hot in here? <laughs> just wondering. Just look over there and Mark's... I got no shirt on. Okay. Hey, don't be telling the ladies. I'm sorry. That. I'm sorry. Now, now they now they won't be able to paint. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh my goodness. Be kind of like a Fabio. I don't know if I can work in these conditions. I know it's distracting, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Can't paint a straight line anymore. <laughs> And now everybody knows why you can paint perfect circles. Because <laughs> the reference you have. <laughs> gross. That's gross. Okay. you got kids watching, honey. Oh, are you talking about your belly? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. On another subject. Let's get off of that mental image right there. Fortunately, nobody's eating right now. <laughs> oh, gosh. Seriously, why do you have your shirt off? It's hot. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, at least I'm hot. Okay, I'll take my blanket off. My legs. <laughs> I was cold earlier. It is kind of getting warm in here. All right, so now I've got all of the pine trees kind of in there. And actually kind of worked out that they are pretty much... <laughs> all sort of even distance uh, from one another. There are a couple that are actually tucked back in here that I might put in that are smaller and close to one another. Uh, okay. I don't know what I did there. What are you laughing at now? Are you getting comments? Yes. About the shirtlessness? Huh? Yes. <laughs> this is the time, and I wish I was in chat. 
could be two places at once because <laughs> I would love to hear some of the comments. <laughs> hmm. All right. So I'm going with a little bit of this black one. I picked up a little bit of the phthalo blue too. And because I don't want it all the way black, it's pretty dark here. And I'm going to start at the top of the tree. And I think I'm going to stick with this brush. And if it works out for me, I'll, I'll stick with it. If it doesn't, then I can pick a different brush. I'm going to add just a tiny bit of white to this. Okay, so the pine trees at the top, they start out kind of going upward. So we're going to have an upward branch there. And then just kind of smush a little bit of space. And then sort of a sideways little something. And then a little space and then a little bit off to this side. And then another smush. If I point my brush straight down at the canvas, I can kind of get better control. And then right about here, we're going to do one more big one up this way. And also on the other side. And then we're going to start going downward. Now, this is your so three, they, three eighths angle. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh -huh. Okay. So they kind of do upward slanting branches for this top portion. I would say it's the top quarter of the tree. Maybe. Let's see how tall. About half. Yeah, about the top quarter of the tree. We're going to be going upwards and then you're going to start coming down. You're going to have more of your branches sort of slanting down and, and then back up. Okay. I'll give you that realistic look that we're going for. Leave little spaces between the branches a little bit. I'm using this brush, but you could use a fan brush if you're comfortable doing your your pine trees with a fan brush, you can do that. I find that I have a little bit more control when I'm using this brush, so I'm just going to continue with it. Come out a little bit wider, and each time as I go down the tree, I'm going to get a little bit wider and a little bit wider. But this tree is very narrow, so the only I'm only going to come out to about right here on it. So just keep that in mind. If you need to, you can chalk it. You know, draw yourself a little chalk line to keep yourself a, a little you know, boundaries so that you don't go past those boundaries so your tree doesn't start to, you know, look uh, off. Grab a little bit of the darker. Does, it has these these gaps in between its branches too so it's got every now and then you'll have these little areas where there's this really uh, big pocket of, of empty space so just kind of don't try to fill that in um, you can leave those out those will make it look more realistic too so as I get down below this line here I'm going to go a little bit darker because this is down here it's a little bit darker and actually, I'm going to do these back trees first because they're going to be behind this tree. So I'm going to go ahead and come stop right there and just come in here and do these back trees right here. And all of this is going to be covered up. So I'm just doing the tops of them.
all of this is going to be dark back here, so I'm just going to go ahead and bring this dark up to right about there. I'm using a little bit of the lighter blue for this these back trees, this color that I was using up there, just so it's a little bit lighter. And just tapping little lines at the top, little tiny taps. pretty good trauma actually. Yeah, you're doing really good. I didn't think this would be too difficult. We we went I went with a little bit easier one um on purpose because I knew that tomorrow we're gonna be painting for a couple hours at least on the truck. This is what we'll be doing for the Patreon folks that pay five dollars or more. This is our bonus video for the month of December. So you want to sign up there's still time and we'll be doing that live show tomorrow at 3 p uh, 2 p.m central so It'll be fun so it's the side view we did the red truck from the front and this one is the side view it'll be a little bit more complicated a little bit more detailed This tree is in front of this one. When we put our highlights in, uh, when we can, then we can define which trees are kind of in front and behind. Right now, it's all going to be kind of big black blobs once we get down to a certain point. But we can kind of use the white highlights to sort of define the boundaries between some of these trees later. Just trying to give them a different view there, zoomed in. Cool. Trying to be very indiscreet about it, but... <laughs> I'm going to pretend that house is just not there. <laughs> not worry about it right now, because we're just going to be trying to paint around it. Oh, it's gonna... no. So... Little house got eaten by the trees there. <laughs> we'll put him in later. All right, so top, tap, tap at the very top, little taps. And then kind of upward branches. And then right about here, I'm going to start slowly transitioning to downward facing branches. Sounds like a yoga pose. Yoga pose. <laughs> <laughs> to go with the yoga blocks that you got covered exactly. up there. <laughs> we are now doing downward facing branches. <laughs> Find the inner trunk. <laughs> Find your inner trunk. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay.
just kind of having that tip face down here, drawing it from side to side. If you want to use your fan brush, I'll show you how to do that. You need a lot more paint loaded up on your brush. Kind of thick with paint here, and you're just going to tap. See, I have a harder time getting them small when I'm using this, you know, I just, I think that if I was to use it more often, I probably would have a little bit easier time of it, but I just, I, uh, I find that I, my, you are more comfortable with the angle brush. Angle brush, yep. So I'm going to take that off. So that's a tip for everybody. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use a brush Angela's using. You can use ones that you're yeah. the most comfortable with and exactly. relaxed with. Yep. But if you don't, there's a six-point penalty. <laughs> Just letting you know we're keeping score. <laughs> Is that so? I don't think so. Okay, so... Yes, and for people who are wondering, the yoga blocks are available through the Amazon store link down below. Yes, they're in my, Am my acrylic painting supplies list. I've got four lists on there. One's just random stuff that I think is fun. One's a Christmas list of just Christmassy stuff that I thought was kind of cool. And then one is a list of my favorite books and movies. <laughs> <laughs> And then a list of painting supplies. Oh, so right, right. <laughs> probably what people really want to see. Yeah. <laughs> but if you know you're going to be buying stuff from Amazon and you want to help support our channel, even if you don't buy anything from the store, if you visit the store through my links and then... Uh, go elsewhere and, you know, look at the stuff in my store and then go elsewhere on Amazon and buy some stuff, you will support the channel through your purchases because a small portion of the sales will go to our channel. So if you feel like it, you can help throw a few dollars our way for Christmas. Mm -hmm. If you. And no extra cost If you're to so them. inclined. No cost to them, it's just... No, no. I don't even know that it's happening. It's just how their affiliate program works. I think you have to buy it within 24 hours of visiting through my link, so I think that's the only thing that... Yep. Okay. Well, and I didn't mention this, but I, I think it's pretty clear you want to make sure that your branches are all leading back to this main branch here so you don't want any branches just sticking out here not attached to anything so just keep that in mind when you're putting these in to attach them And this one is very droopy. All right, so let's grab the light phthalo blue here. Light ultramarine, those two colors that we use for our snow. Those will be our I like colors for our trees and I'm just going to go on these little branches and just 
highlight parts that are sticking up. I want to be sure that I'm going lighter than what's behind them so that they're showing up against some of these. backgrounds. Not all of them are going to be highlighted, so a few of these trees are just going to be dark and not you're not going to really see any of this light snow on them, so but most of them will have a little bit of snow. And if you put too much of it, Always go back in and put more of the dark back in too. So don't don't have to get it just so the first time. I kind of think I want a medium color first, so I'm looking at this as so let's make a, a light version of this tree color. Kind of a lighter phthalo blue. I'm just gonna go in and tap in a little bit of that on some of these branches. And especially down here, some of these lower branches are going to be kind of in shadow, so they're not gonna get as much of the brighter highlights on the snow. These ones up here are kind of catching that Moonlight, so they're going to be a little bit brighter, but these ones down here might be a little bit darker. And they kind of do these like finger things, so I'm, I haven't been putting them in that way, but the, as they come down, these branches kind of these like little finger like let me fix the shadows in there there we go so those branches are kind of laden down with snow and they're Drooping. In the middle here, I'm going to turn. This is the middle of the tree. There's going to be some that are facing straight at us, so we're going to kind of see these lines going almost straight up on some of these ones that are sort of in the middle, and then we're going to see them from the side again. This one I'm going to keep fairly dark back here and just let it sort of be dark. Maybe put a little bit on there, but not much. And I want to erase all of this chalk marks too now. I'm still seeing chalk through here, so I don't want that distracting me. Because it can be hard to see where... What you, what's actually paint, what's chalk at this point. Okay, so that's better. And there's a ghost cabin too. There's a ghost cabin. <laughs> yeah, I watched a good movie about, well, Christmas ghosts. It's the it's called The Man Who Invented Christmas. It's more of a title, but it was a great, it was a really good movie. And it was about Charles Dickens writing Christmas Carol. Which, if you haven't ever read, I would highly recommend. It's you probably know the story, but so the book's always better. So it was really good. I think I read it last year, maybe the year before our book club read it. Okay, so going with a little bit of white now. It's it's also got I mixed in some of this blue that was already on my brush, so just. And doing these little finger like slanted lines there. 
That's kind of what they look like to me. See, like little hands reaching out. Does these little, I don't know. Yeah, it just looks like to me like a like hands reaching out. So that's what I'm trying to get here. They're kind of going downward and then they kind of branch off a little bit. One or two little things. Okay. Maybe okay. they're doing the hand jive. <laughs> okay. There's an ear worm for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you too. <laughs> I'm glad you keep me employed. <laughs> as silly as I can be sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah, I wouldn't do this without you. I've tried. It wasn't any fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, somebody said maybe they're jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to use that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm just taking my time with this tree because this is going to be one of our focal point trees. It's one of our biggest trees. So this one will be another one and this one. Those three trees I'm going to kind of really take my time with and the rest of these are kind of more you know farther away so I'm not gonna spend as much time on so this one is so real quick that show you were talking about was called a Christmas Carol no it was called it was called the man who invented Christmas okay and it's about Charles Dickens writing his Christmas Carol, it, you know, it has... He was in the movie. He was, like, in the story. Right. It's him. Right. It's the story of him writing a Christmas Carol and all the chaos and things that were going on in his house at the time. And he was on a deadline. Like, he, he, he'd had it. His last book had been a flop, and, or his last couple books had been a flop. And he was really kind of in a slump creatively. And, um, and it was at a time in England when Christmas wasn't all of that popular. Like, it wasn't celebrated much. It was kind of a, you know, um, I don't know, just not something that people really got into. Christmas trees were just Queen Victoria. It was, I think it was the first year that she put the Christmas tree in, her, in the, in the uh, palace. Because um, it was a German tradition, and her husband was German, Prince Albert. Mm -hmm. And so um, and this is when the, you know, the time period when the Christmas Carol came out. And, and it was really, I don't know, it's just really cool because it was, it, uh, well, I'm not going to give it away. But right, so it's, you know, it's it, just really, it's really the, interesting. It's the story of the Christmas Carol with right. him in it. So Right, Charles they, Dickens' right, story. So, right. It's his story. It's not the Christmas Carol story. It's but it's it, he's he's talking to Scrooge and stuff as if he's in this you know, in, in the right, house in, with them. It's it, yeah. it's like uh he's talking to his characters in mm -hmm. his books as he's writing it, you know. Yeah, it was stuff. a pretty so cool, really take cool. On it. Yeah, it was really cool. Very creative and I just really enjoyed seeing what I had read a book similar that was called Charles uh Dickens and his Carol. Um, last year or the year before that was very similar to this. So I don't know if it was based off of that book or not, but um, that also was talking about it. I just, I'm, I've really uh, always, whether it's musicians or writers or whatever, it just fascinates me the way people come up with things, you know, with the creative mind. Um, I always love reading about um, that kind of thing and figuring out how people got their inspiration. And it's always you know, I don't know. It's it's almost like magic, you know, sometimes. And it, you just got to be at the right place at the right time and the right, you know, atmosphere. And he wrote it out of desperation almost, you know. And it, it turned out to be the his most popular book and the most and very influential book, you know, for his time period. So pretty cool. 
Okay, so just adding little bits. You can see I'm adding a little bit of blue, a little bit of the, a little bit of the brighter white in parts. Um, and go back through and just add a little bit of bright white here and there. But keeping these ones a little bit darker back here that are in the shadow. And just only bringing out the highlights where I want the tree to kind of come forward and be seen better. So. There we go. And these trees are quite large. These branches are big and they're covering a big area, you know. Compared to our little teeny, tiny house, you can see how big these are, so. These are giant pine trees. Maybe giant sequoia. No, I don't think they're that big, but. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to look up what kind of tree that is. No, they're big. This may be a made-up picture, who knows. It, it looks real to me, but... I mean, if you found it on the internet, it's real. Well, this is a Shutterstock image, so there's no telling. A lot of, a lot of their images are doctored up to look good. Well, these back ones, I'm just going to kind of do little sideways lines here. At least magazines don't do that to people. <laughs> yeah, at least they don't doctor them up, make them look better. Right, no right. photoshopping there. No photoshopping at all. <laughs> all right. Okay, going down here, I'm going to do a little bit back here, but I'm keeping that fairly dark because all of this is going to be covered up by this tree here. So let's do this one right here. So with this medium, medium blue color, just start up at the top and just kind of tap over the top and kind of try to figure out where these branches are, where the top of those branches are and put this color. So that's what I'm doing here. And then as I'm coming down, I'm going to... Do some right in the middle because some of those branches are coming straight at us. So don't forget the middle part. And the middle parts um, a lot of times look kind of like V's almost. Like you, you'll see it look like that where it's catching the light. And then these ones are coming down like this. And I do want some of the dark over the top of the snow here. Uh, just a little bit. Right there. There we go. And then if we want to, we've got a little fence post over here that I'm seeing. We're really not going to see the top of the fence, but we can put in the snow that's sitting on top of it. So I'm going to grab some of that blue and just tap a little bit of that blue in a line here to put our little fence post in. Fences. And all of this is covered up, but then we're seeing it again down here. Just above that dark line. 
and then off to the side here. I think I'm going to bring this down. Or actually, I'll move my move my cabin up. Put this blue right there, and put the fence right here. A little bit of it right there. Kind of at an angle, kind of following the slope of that roof or the slope of the snow line there. And then every now and then put a little post coming down. And there's another one here. And these ones can be a little bit darker. You're seeing the shadow underneath. Okay, and then I'm going to grab some of that white and just put it kind of in between those posts there and on top. do the house before I do any more because it's covered up by the by the fence post here. So this is at a diagonal here. It goes straight up and down on the sides. These sides are straight up and down. here is showing and this line is going to match the line of the roof so whatever we decided on that I'm going to go ahead and kind of tap in where I want the roof line to be there and go down this way and real close to the edge of the snow It's kind of that light blue, that light phthalo blue that the rest of this snow around it is. And let me make sure that this back edge is really sharp. brush so that I could get it straight. And I'm going to tap in that this side of the roof line right there. There we go. That was cute. Cute little cabin. Okay, so I got this one. angle wrong. So uh, you see this right here, this angle here, coming down this way, and this angle here should match up. So I was in a little bit, so I wanted to bring that out a little bit more so that that matches. What were you saying, huh? 
think that was the first cute. I think so too. Trees don't get the cute. Very often, it's not, I don't know, I don't, trees just don't register as cute very much. So I added that, blah, the, the brown, I didn't mention it, but we did it before when we did it, when we made that brown, we added it to the blue. So I just added it to the blue color that we've been using in our trees here. And I'm going to use a light blue mixed in with that. So I'll grab that light phthalo blue. Just going to mix that in there, and I'm going to tap in our logs that go this way. Across our cabin here. And then there's a line here underneath the roof eaves. There, you might want to zoom in, honey. This is pretty detailed. There we go. That's good. Okay, so there's the roof eaves there. Got a line right there. And then we've got our little cabin lines going across. I think this needs to come straight out a little bit more, straight up and down right here. And then these are angled in this way. Okay, don't have to be super detailed, just a little detail goes a long way on this. And then we want that back end of the cabin coming all the way out just before the end there. All right, and then we can finish our little fences, fence posts. So I'm going to grab some of this white that was mixed with a little bit of blue and put some of the fence posts in in front here. Some of that darker color. I kind of went a little high with that. There we go. Oh, this fence does not make a whole lot of sense on this. If you look at it, it's like the, the lines are all over the place. So if you want to make it a little more square, you can. If it's bugging you, this is kind of weird, so I think. But it looks like it was made out of just raw, raw tree trunks. Probably, yeah. Not like through a sawmill. Probably not, no. That's why there's no trees in that area. They massacred all the trees <laughs> and built a house and then taunting all the other trees next to it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the story. Okay. Could be. All right, so I'm going to grab some of the brighter white and I'm just going to dry brush over the top here. Just a little bit of brighter white highlights there little bit tapped on top of the snow here and there and then I'm going to add some brighter white kind of detail around the side of the house here. Grab some of the light thalo blue and a little bit of the darker thalo blue here and kind of come up next to the house here and do some of the shadowed snow right there. I'm not seeing any fence posts there. It may be covered by the rooftop. I'm not sure. There might be a fence post there. Let's maybe make one a little bit low so we can see where it is.
There we go. Okay. Cute. All right, let's put in our little glowing. I'm going to grab the cadmium yellow and white. And go right up here, real close to the eaves. Follow these lines. Parallel, and then these two lines are going to be diagonal, like these following the board edges of the boards there. There we go. Then we can wet that down a little bit, water it down. Add a little bit of that snow shine to the snow right outside the window there. Grab some of the black. Add just a tiny, well actually let me see, before I do this there's a little bit of gold. So I'm going to add a little bit of the quinacridone to this and add a little bit of the yellow orangey color up here in this upper corner. line of black we can just tiny tiny little line there. okay oh, cute so let's do a little bit of this gold color up in the moon now that the moon's dry I'm gonna use this color up here and do the little details that are in the moon the little Maybe a little bit more pink. There's, you know, those little shadows that happen on the moon. Grab a little bit more of the brighter color. Fill in if you need to, if you still see blue through it anywhere. I need to erase all of that. If you want to make it kind of fuzzy. You could use the golden glow. We've done this before where we've taken this glow. You wipe off most of the color on a stiff bristled brush and you go just around the outside of that moon. You can leave this out. Ours is a little bit more clean than this, but I kind of like the glow look myself, so. And then there is a little bit of clouds coming in front of the moon on ours, so. A little bit of the unbleached titanium, or, uh, Ultramarine, light ultramarine. Actually, I don't know if I like the glow. I'm gonna take that off. What? A whole bunch of people in the future just went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I just did it. That's why I tell people to watch the whole thing first before they paint along with me, because I do this. So we're almost done. All we need to do is see a little bit of... Oh, I see something you've missed. Right here that I need to fix that. What? It's been bothering me for about 20 minutes now. What? Tell me. There's an unfinished tree in the foreground. Well, yeah. <laughs> getting to that yes That's okay just want to make sure thank you yes 
will not forget that. <laughs> we did do everything else first. I guess I could have I could have saved the cabin, but I'm gonna mix more of that dark color. I'm using phthalo blue, ultramarine black here. I think she's just pretending like she saw it, everybody. Okay. You thought I forgot it? Really? I, I don't know how you could forget that. It's like right there. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. It's half of a tree. <laughs> I forget some things, but I don't think I'd forget that. <laughs> I have forgotten things before, but <laughs> pretty okay, sure I, I would have noticed half of a tree. I need people in chat to give me a thumbs up if they think that she forgot. <laughs> Do not forget, I promise you. <laughs> I admit when I'm wrong. Alrighty. So remember, this tree is pretty narrow, even though it's big. It's it's not. It doesn't come out too far, really. Okay, and even though it goes straight up and down, the bottom of it is kind of diagonal, so it is kind of slanted there. Let's grab some of the yellow blue, add a little bit of white, use that for our highlight color here to start with. And then I'm going to use a little bit of this shadow color up underneath the tree here. There's some snow kind of tapping around here. Grab Make it a little bit lighter than that, but it's pretty, pretty, pretty dark right up underneath the tree. thing on this one and there's like snow piled up against it Let's use some of the lighter color back here on this back tree Is there any kind of chimney visible on the cabin? No. Yeah, I didn't. I couldn't see one, but wasn't sure if it was like the truck mirror. Mm, you could put one though. It does look like there's like smoke coming out of it. That would be cruel. What? Because then you've got this cabin and fence built out of all the trees that were once there. Uh -huh. and, and then, then burning they're, them. They're burning them. It'd just be like. What kind of a Christmas scene are you painting here?
Okay. And let's do some of this brighter white on some of these limbs. And I really don't want them to be dots. I want them to be kind of There we go. You could probably use a round brush too if you wanted to. It just depends on how comfortable you are with the the angle brush. Some of these are kind of long sweeping lines. And then these ones that are coming straight down are coming straight at us. Do some of the darker blue down here. We're kind of seeing some of the underside of the tree. So while you're painting and thinking, I'll just mm -hmm. remind everybody that uh, traceables are available at patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art. Yes. And at the dollar level, they're available. You can get access to all of the traceables in there that go all the way back to February 2017. So as many downloads as you want for all those. For a dollar. For one dollar a month. Yes. And then we also have the five dollar level, which is the traceables plus access to a bonus video and we'll be doing the bonus video tomorrow yes but not just that bonus video it's also access to the bonus videos we've done in the months past yes all so the bonus videos see those and then we got the ten dollar level which is all of that plus also an additional Facebook group that's private where Angela does another tutorial that goes over the four weeks of the month, and then also does polls and other special chats. They get to pick the bonus videos and mm -hmm, things nice. like that. So. so don't blame Angela for the truck. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a way to support the channel and uh, get some extra goodies there too. So we do appreciate it. Yes. Okay, I think I'm going to call that good once you zoom out there. Let me see what it looks like here. Right, so I can go in now with some of the little bit darker color. If I want to, I can glaze in a little bit of shadows in my snow along this side here. bring this down so I can see the shadow line there. Okay. There is kind of some texture all through this snow in here so if you wanted to you could tap in texture or a little bit darker 
color in these corners here. snow by our house here. We can brighten up our line of snow here if we want to. Add a little glow to our snow scraping some of this white across, dry brushing, scrubbing it in lightly. It doesn't have to be super dark. If you thin it out a little bit, it'll go on even thinner. If you want to, you could put, you could grab some zinc white or something like that if you wanted to put in some fog um, or some, let me go ahead and put a little bit of chimney smoke in around our upper, above our cabin. If you want to put in a chimney, you can. I'm using that zinc white, it's already transparent. A little bit of watered down paint, wipe most of it off and then just... on there. Kind of see some some up here too maybe. Just above the top of our mountain there. going over the moon. It's very, fairly subtle, so if you want it to be noticeable, more noticeable, you could add more white, uh, regular titanium white. But this zinc white gives it that kind of smoky feel. All right, I think I'm done. What do you think, huh? Good? Good enough? Mark's not listening. I no, I'm listening. Okay. I think so. Okay. No, I just getting prepared for my next job here. Oh. Which super chatty? I'll have some announcements, yeah. Good. Yeah, just before the show, we watched a hawk try to catch a bird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we did. He was being sneaky. He was just standing on our bird feeder waiting waiting for the birds to come by. Yeah. Trying to hide in the trees for a little while and then he got frustrated and flew out onto the bird feeder. Okay. Putting more bright, bright white here. Down. Okay, just want to make sure I didn't jump over you. <laughs> no, it's like I said, I was done. I'm like, what are you waiting for? Well, you said you're done, and you were adding more paint. <laughs> well, I know, I always do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to step on your toes. Okay. Uh, so, again, we had dozens and dozens of chatters out there, and we had two super chats today. Uh, the first one comes from Brenda, and she says, Merry Christmas. Thank you for all that you do. 
Merry Christmas, Brenda. Merry Christmas, Brenda. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And then the second one was from Susan L. And she says, Merry Christmas, Angela Mark. Angela, you are a lovely artist and oh. teacher. Mark, thanks for supporting Angela, your technical skills, and, well, just being you. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> That so, says it all. Yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Susan, and thank you. It's awesome. Thank you, Susan. Sorry, I'm I'm concentrating here. <laughs> all right. You pull it down a little bit so I can see the juice in there. Okay. Man, Very that good. Looks super. We're finished. Yeah, turned out pretty good. If you want to, I, you know, if you wanted to add like a little bit more of the of the um, blue from the background or from the sky too. We could add a little bit of that ultramarine since this area here was all that phthalo blue. Um, you could add just a little bit of the ultramarine in some spots up here just to tie that in a little bit. wouldn't have to be very much, but it could maybe tie in a little bit because it looks like it's kind of very different from the rest of the colors so okay now just do a little bit of that real quick what level of patreon do they get access to the uh the photo the five dollar five dollar okay the five, yeah the five dollar level gets the finished puff photograph of my paintings although i post most of the finished painting paintings on instagram as well and that, then they go to my Facebook page from there. So, um, okay. most of them, you know, so, but they get the traceable, the reference photo of this, the reference photo that I, the original reference photo, and then, um, point to the corner. That <laughs> reference photo, this <laughs> reference photo. They get this image, and this image, and then the traceable, and then the bonus video. So, yeah. Excellent. Yep. So that's tomorrow. We're doing the bonus video for the truck. Yes. The blue truck. Yes. Yeah. I'm realizing that this looks a lot darker than the uh -oh. reference photo. Go ahead, bring it out. No, I'm Come just ahead. saying I might have oh. done more blue, like a less less black and more more of the ultramarine blue, maybe. But it's all right. I like it. It's just not as yeah. blue, blue, blue. This blue, reference. Blue, blue, blue Christmas. Yeah, you wanted a little bit more blue, blue, and not so green. It, you could use just the ultramarine blue and not the phthalo blue in there. Make it a little bit more. That's what I was thinking through the whole video, but Were I'm like, you? well, you know, she knows what she's doing, so <laughs> I'm not going to step on her cho toes on her channel. So. <laughs> well, another thing that you could do, and this is now that this is dry, I'll show you what you can do. And I've done this before, and that, in fact, I really like to do this when I'm when I'm doing my fine art paintings because I love, you know, glazing over the top of things and adding other colors, you can always take your ultramarine blue, which is a transparent color, and add a little bit of water, a little bit of glazing liquid, and just glaze over the top of whatever area you're looking at. And it will... Boom. Make it more... Blue. And then you may end up having to go back over and add a little bit more of your light color where you can see the difference oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. I actually like that better. Sorry, guys. You thought you were done. Yeah, everybody who split early, they're missing out. <laughs> you got to stay to the end. <laughs> you never know what she's going to do. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, isn't that always the way? <laughs> yep, those 80, 90 people are going to be. Sad now. Oh, really? Did they leave? If we had that many people leave already? Yeah. Wow. Okay. But, you know, that'll teach them. <laughs> that, that'll learn them. <laughs> I mean, one time we even came back from the outro. We did, yeah, because we <laughs> forgot something totally. That was, yeah. Yeah, and people okay, are still in there. Okay, so there you go. And then you can go back in and uh, use a little bit of water and... And wipe your light areas down if you want to leave those brighter. But 
Yeah, I like that better actually. A little bit yeah, more blue-blue. Yeah, those are some blue. good tips yeah. for sure. So, all right. That's it. We're, we're done for real. See you guys next time. We'll be here tomorrow for the bonus video for the Patreon folks. And then we'll be back on Tuesday for... What are we doing Tuesday? I don't remember what we're painting on Tuesday. Oh, the deer. The deer in winter. And then we're doing an angel. And then we're going to have a break for Christmas. So, yeah. And that'll be so it's it. six p six p.m. Tuesday night. Yes, six p.m. Tuesday night. We'll be back. All right, guys. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>